Here we have three examples of icosahedra, and even though they all look different, actually the same underlying rule governs all three of them. I've made a video about this one and this one before, both of which are rather complicated things to build, but this one is actually quite easy, and I think that you can accomplish it without even using a saw. Like so many things in the world are, this is a re-imaging of an old idea. And I actually found something similar in this book here. What I think is so interesting about this version of an icosahedron is that it's based on the golden rectangle, which is defined by the Fibonacci sequence. The author suggests using the rather simplified dimensions of 5 and 8 to approximate a golden rectangle but we can do a little bit better than that. Of course you can use these, but a golden rectangle actually has as one of its dimensions an irrational number. And as the Fibonacci sequence gets larger, it more closely approximates a perfect golden rectangle, which is really impossible. I already know that the width dimension for my golden rectangles is going to be 5 inches. So that can be ripped right away if you have a table saw. But like I said, you don't have to have one to build this project. This plywood material that I'm using is intended to be an underlayment and it's just over 5 millimeters, which is just under a quarter of an inch. This is a three-ply material, and it's super lightweight and super inexpensive. I picked up a 4x8 sheet to make this video for 12 bucks. We can cut this material easily just using a utility knife, but I highly recommend using a brand new blade, and we'll have to score both sides. Be sure to use clamps. This is the only way you're going to get away with cutting this without a saw. Striking it four or five times gets us roughly to the center, and now I'm going to transfer the mark up to the top. Notice that I have it hanging over the edge, and that's so that when I cut this way, I'm putting the board under tension and it makes it a lot easier to cut deeper. give it the old sandpaper on a stick routine, it's just as nice as a cut made on the table saw. So a golden rectangle will have these proportions. If one side is one unit, then the other side is the golden number. Whoa, 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 don't worry. The math won't kill you. It's only easy stuff, I promise. So what is this golden number and how do we find it? It's really easy. It's just one plus the square root of five and then we take that entire quantity and divide it by 2. But remember, the golden number is actually an irrational number, so this is only an approximation. But I think since we're probably about the size of an atom by this point, that should be close enough for this project. In the case of our rectangle, we have 5 units for our width, therefore this is going to be 5 times the golden number. So that means our length cut is 8.09, or just under 8 and an eighth. Yes, I went through all that trouble to say just a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. Please leave your dissatisfied comments down below.
Now it's time to cut out the slot. It's the same thickness as the material we're using. And we're going to do it the same on all three parts because they're all three identical. It starts on one side and it stops here. How we determine where here is is by centering the width of one of the parts on the length of it. Now I know that I said that you could do this without a saw, but that doesn't mean that you should do this without a saw. Yes, we have to do both sides, so it helps to keep two combination squares, one for that setting and one for this setting. Well, it can certainly be done. Your mileage may vary, and I probably recommend the sandpaper on a stick. A stop has been set to keep me from cutting too far, and flipping the piece over ensures that each part is perfectly symmetrical. Now I'm set up to batch these out quickly and easily. At this point we can break up this little sliver and test to make sure we have a snug fit. We don't want it too snug because we don't want it to wedge it open but we want it to stay still. That's about perfect. Occasionally you'll have a fit that's just too snug, but fortunately there's an easy solution to this. Just use a piece of paper as a shim and then recut your slots. This way you can avoid having to make any adjustment on the fence. If you're still a beginner with a table saw, you may never have encountered this problem before. A saw blade is round, and so it cuts deeper underneath than it does at the top. For that reason, we still have to remove this little piece here. Some of you out there are completionists. I know this because I read the comments. So you should appreciate that. Two of these three little keys can be glued in permanently, but one should just remain in with a friction fit if you want to be able to disassemble it. Well, that brings us to the fun part. This shouldn't require too much explanation. You just stretch the rubber bands from tack to tack. And you shouldn't have too much difficulty. If you do, you can always come back and watch this or watch or look at the model for a bit. And I certainly hope that you enjoyed this.
and there it is. I give you the Golden Rectangle Rubber Band Icosahedron. If you follow the links in the description down below, it will bring you to a printable template for a golden rectangle like this, based on a 5 inch width. And of course, if you are doing this for a classroom project, you may want to skip the wood cutting and the thumbtacks altogether, in which case you may want to have some ready to assemble pieces of cardboard or hardboard ready. Perhaps this is best suited to a group project because without the thumbtacks, just holding it together with rubber bands requires some dexterity. One final point of interest. I couldn't help but notice when I was filming this that the golden rectangle looks very similar to a rectangle inscribed in a circle that you would get when you use a compass and the diameter of a circle to make this six-pointed flower. So, I did the math, and you can check it over, sorry if it's a bit chicken scratchy. But it turns out, if you base, or if you make this leg one, this unit here should be the golden number. And it wasn't, it was real close. It turned out to be 1.7 something, whereas the golden number is 1.6 something. And if we compare those two numbers, like I did here, you can see that this is about 93% close to being a golden rectangle. So this is a quick and easy approximation if you want to draw one real fast. Here is the famous approximation of the golden spiral. And this is another way that we can see the discrepancy between the two rectangles without using math. If you were to draw one of these, and then use your compass to draw one of these right on top of it, maintaining one of the dimensions, you'd see probably a slight difference right here. I didn't do it, but I trust in the math enough to make predictions.